सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली कटर वंस अगेन रिग्रेटेबली वंस अगेन इज बैक टू दीम ऑफ ईस्टर्न उत्तर प्रदेश गैंगस्टर्स गैंगस्टर्स स्ट्रॉन्गमैन बहुबली Whatever you want to call them, because one of them just got released from jail, along with his wife, that is Amar Mani Tripathi, and his wife Madhu Mani Tripathi. They both been released. Both are murderers. I don't have to say alleged with this because both are convicted murderers, convicted, convicted convictions upheld in higher uh, higher courts, given life sentences. Both have now come out. Both have now come out, which is what we are talking about, because. to them also with them also is is woven the story and it's it's a very cluttered story with them is woven the story of of the underworld politics links in uttar pradesh particularly eastern uttar pradesh and each one of these gangsters as we have seen in the other episodes that we in which we featured mukhtar ansari we featured prajesh singh we featured some others harishankar tiwari who recently passed away you can see that all of them have not just politics but also interconnections rivalries its gang versus gang and their defections within gangs and within politics many of them have served time not just in jail but with every political party also their ambar manitra party is the star because he's been in congress he's been in, in a breakaway part of the congress that is loktantrik congress party he's been with bjp as a partner as a partner because lcp or one faction of lcp joined the bjp he served as a minister under several chief ministers in up government he's been with bsp and so on and so forth and he has won elections also from jail once in 2007 on sp ticket now he has been released along with his wife both murderers so we'll talk about that and we'll tell tell you their story in some detail we talked about it we alluded to it for about three paras of spoken word in our episode on harishankar tiwari the big big brahmin mafia leader or leader of the brahmin mafia of gorakhpur who passed away recently i will share a link of that episode also with you with the description of this episode please please see that but once we finish talking about these gangsters or these murderers who are now being freed who are now being freed on the basis of quote and quote good, good conduct based on a policy of yogi adityanath government much amended policy came, came in as his government was formed in 2018 has been amended twice after that according to that policy a convict who serving time in jail has served more than 16 years is more than 60 years of age has had good conduct can be released right can be released prematurely i mean to be fair it, this year up government has released 691 life sentence convicts or convict serving life se- sentence and before i start wading into the more gory details of this story which i will let me also let me also alert you that today's episode is not all about criminals gangsters murderers mafias mafia politics nexus it's all of that but it's also a part of it towards the end is also about heroes and superstars and these are these are heroes of superstars not of any cinema bollywood or telugu or tamil or any indian cinema nor is it nor is it about cricketers it's about sports stars but those from track and field the the mother or the parent of all sports in the world wonderful things have happened there and i will also talk about that for a couple of minutes and remember it's not just about neera chopra neera chopra is a part of it but there is something but there is something more to it to our story today now back to the tripathi clan story amar mani tripathi amar mani tripathi is now 66 years old born in 1956 in 2003 in 2003 he murdered i don't have to say allegedly at all he murdered a young poet young poet who was anything between 24 to 26 years of age 
probably about anywhere around 24, 25 years of age, who was seven months pregnant. She was murdered by shooters who were also caught later. Obviously, they had been hired. They, they've been hired. They had been given a hit on her. She was living in her tiny apartment in Lucknow and there she was shot dead. Now it turned out that Amarmani Tripathi had been having an affair with her. That is something that was fully proven because DNA tests later proved that the seven month fetus she was carrying that had DNA matching with, with Amar Mani Tripathi. So no doubts on that. That's how he was convicted. So he was arrested. Initially, he avoided arrest. Lots of tamasha happened in UP as it often happens. The investigating officer, Ajay Kumar Chutrabedi, who was investigating the case first and was doing a brilliant job of it. In fact, he even gave refuge or protection at his home to one of the key witnesses in the case. He obviously was, quote unquote, exceeding his brief. So he was moved out. He was moved out. It was Mayavati's government then. He was moved out. In 2003, Mayavati's government also suspended the chief investigator or the chief of the branch which was now investigating the case. Once the first investigating officer, the SHO Ajay Kumar Chaturvedi had been moved out, the case was given to CBCID, which is a state government, state police's topmost investigating wing. Then its chief, Mahendra Lalka, who was an IPS officer of 1967 batch, he was suspended. He was suspended, obviously, because he was refusing to give Amar Mani Tripathi a clean chit. Amar Mani Tripathi at this point was a minister in Mayavati's cabinet. He was suspended. Those days, such suspensions also brought a great deal of protest and resistance from the IPS, IAS community, which started immediately. So in 45 days, he had been reinstated. He had been reinstated. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the family of Madhumita Shukla, who had been murdered, the poet, budding poet who had been murdered. They started knocking at other doors and the case was handed over to the CBI. Case was handed over, over, over to the CBI, but once again, Amar Mani Tripathi was a powerful man because he was not just, just powerful by himself. He had also been closely linked with the larger gang, the Brahmin gang of Hari Shankar Tewari from Gorakhpur. We've told you earlier that Gorakhpur had a history of Brahmin gangs versus Thakur gang. So Thakur gang was headed by Brindra Pratap Shahi for a long time. Brindra Pratap Shahi, who in the course of time was assassinated by Sri Prakash Shukla, a very young Brahmin shooter and gangster who finally was killed in his late 20s. He carried out a big prominent hit in the hospital, medical college hospital in Patna that we've spoken about. In an earlier episode of Karta Clutter, I will share a, share a link with you. He then apparently or allegedly, you can say if you, if you prefer to put it like that, but apparently took a six crore supari to assassinate Kalyan Singh when he was the chief minister of Uttar Pradesh. That was the first time that Kalyan Singh set up a special task force, which quote unquote, put away Shri Prakash Shukla in an against quote unquote encounter on the outskirts, outskirts of Delhi, some, some, somewhere between Noida and Ghaziabad in Uttar Pradesh. So he also was part of the same larger network. Amar Mani Tripathi was a kingpin in that network. He was from the same university, the same colleges, but more importantly, the same, not just the same university of Gorakhpur or the same colleges, but also the same university of gangsterism from UP, out of which, out of which came all these incredibly, incredibly violent graduates in that period. While the CBI investigations went on, again, there was, there was noise and there were protests that witnesses were being influenced, etc. And then justice will not be done in a court in Uttar Pradesh, the Supreme Court. This reached the Supreme Court. Supreme Court transferred the trial to a CBI court in Uttarakhand. That CBI court in Uttarakhand held Amar Mani Tripathi guilty. It also held, held his wife, Madhu Mani Tripathi. See, names can get a bit confusing. The wife, the murderer is Madhu Mani. The victim, the young poet murdered is Madhu Mita. So Madhu Mita is the victim. Madhu Mani is the 
perpetrator or the murderer. So get that very clear. So Madhu Mani was also convicted because lots of evidence was found, particularly phone calls, phone call evidence. So there was there was good evidence. The trial court convicted them. High court upheld the sentence. This was a life sentence. And then started the Tamasha. Murder took place 2003. After the murder, once, once, it, once it became evident that Mayavati and her government were not able to bury the crime in Uttar Pradesh. It had gone to CBI around that time and things were getting really messy for Mayavati. She dropped Ambar Manitra party from her party. It wasn't the first time Ambar Manitra party had dropped from, his, from, 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 from the cabinet in Uttar Pradesh. Earlier in 2001, he was a minister. In fact, hold your breath, minister for institutional finance in Uttar Pradesh cabinet of which chief minister Rajnath Singh. That's when Rajnath Singh had dismissed him from his cabinet. And why did he dismiss him? Because another case, a case of a kidnapping of a rich businessman's 15 year old son. In that case, the kidnappers told the police that the safe haven for them, that the house where they were given refuge in Lucknow was actually Amar Mani Tripathi's house, that he had given them refuge. After that revelation, Rajnath Singh had dropped Amar Mani Tripathi from his cabinet, but that didn't hurt Amar Mani Tripathi's political prospects in the course of time. Mayavati took him into his party. Now, Maya, now Mayavati also had to drop him. So Mayavati dropped him from her cabinet as well. 2007, he gets convicted. 2012, his conviction is upheld by the High Court. 2007, he is also shifted to the Hardwar Jail. Until then, he is in jails in UP. 2007, he shifted to Hardwar Jail. 2007, I told you Tamasha begins now. One set of Tamasha was going on when investigations were on and one after the other, one investigating officer got transferred. The other, investing, uh, uh, the other investigating officer actually very senior IPS officer. So in 2003, Mr. Lalka, Mr. Mahendra Lalka, who was a 1967 batch IPS officer, was almost a DG rank officer in today's terms, right? He had already been in service for 35 years. So he was, he was, he was suspended. When all that failed, that was the early Tamasha. Then the second set of Tamasha started after the conviction of the jailing. So 2007, both husband and wife and two others, two others, including one of their nephews and two others, the shooters. They were jailed and they were, they were all sent to Hardwar jail in Uttarakhand. But you know what? It's tough enough to be in jail, but it's even tougher if you're away from your hometown. Homesick to insan hota hai na, you feel homesick. So obviously, I'm not saying that they went to court and they said we are homesick, but they gave one pretext or the other. So first, see how this works now. First, Madhumani got the court's permission to be shifted to Gorakhpur jail. So that's a hometown jail, right? Hometown jail. And soon enough, in 2012, Amar Mani also got permission to be shifted to Gorakhpur jail. Then the other shooters also got permission to be shifted to Gorakhpur jail. How did these people manage to get shifted to Gorakhpur jail? Once again, hold your breath because, you know, that is... If UP has acquired this, this reputation of deep criminality and crime, politics, nexus, then you have to understand these stories. And I know it's challenging for me also because I also get lost between this. Sometimes these people change parties faster than you might change metro lines going from, going from one part of a complicated big metro city to another. So it, it becomes very cluttery to keep track of that. But the fact is, that somebody in Uttar Pradesh, by this time Mulayam Singh Yadav was in power in Uttar Pradesh. Somebody in Uttar Pradesh registered a whole bunch of cases of bounce checks against the Tripathi family. Now, because these bounce checks cases had been registered, they had to be moved to Uttar Pradesh for investigation and where else but to their hometown in 2012. And soon enough after that, soon enough after that, and soon enough after that, one after the other, one after the other, they got moved to a hospital and this is called Baba Raghav Das Medical College. It's a government medical college hospital. All four of them got all four of them got moved there. And what is the pretext? What was the sickness for which they needed treatment? So the sickness was once again hold your breath. In fact, you need to practice pranayama to listen to stories like these. 
they got moved to a hospital on the pretext that all four were prone to depression they were suffering from depression you kill somebody you are convicted you are convicted to life imprisonment you couldn't be on top of the world you can always go to a shrink and say listen boss i am feeling depressed it just so happened that i killed a young woman who was who was 7 months pregnant mar gayi she died what do i do i have to spend my life in jail i am so depressed so the pretext was that they are suffering from depression and have suicidal tendencies and that's how they were moved to a hospital and that's why that's why the victim's sister is now saying that they've spent more time in hospital than in jail right and now they are out now that they are out i feel a threat from them now why they are important and why should up government be wanting to release them that you understand by now because upper caste vote in uttar pradesh in fact across the hindi heartland upper caste vote is essentially the bjp's vote the largest vote bank in india is the upper caste vote bank right now it's bigger than the muslim vote bank it's bigger than the dalit vote bank and obc vote bank is divided anyway because there are so many castes there upper caste vote bank is the most cohesive or coherent vote bank for any party in the country that's a bjp's vote bank there is a general impression that brahmins in up are not very happy with yogi adityanath government because thakur seem happier with this government whatever whatever the facts at at this point of time it is good it's politically good to be seen to be kind to brahmins and among brahmins in eastern up amar manitra party he is a sizable leader because you know what when 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 gangsters of one caste run mafias right then how does the other caste defend itself or fight for its rights or stand up to them they find their own gangsters and they set up their own mafias that is the old harishankar tiwari versus virendra pratap shahi story in eastern up or in gorakhpur in fact the other gangsters we spoken about in the past muktar abbas ansari brijesh singh etc have also come out of the same same gangs now if you want to look at the purely political history of ambar mani tripathi first of all as a young brahmin who immediately very soon became a part of the hari shankar tiwari brahmin mafia right very early on he contested in eastern up in gorakhpur area on a cpi ticket cpi communist party of india that's 1981 he lost that election 1985 was a fresh fresh election he lost that election also the important thing is and that's how he announced that he has arrived as a leader of some consequence he contested against virendra pratap shahi because it took some gall to contest against virendra pratap shahi who was the foremost thakur gangster thakur mafia don of that period in 1989 finally he won an election finally he won again all these elections were contested from the same constituency lakshmipur which later became nautanwa after delimitation in 1989 he won from the same constituency on congress ticket on congress tickets in 96 he won a second time on the congress party's ticket but his journey political journey was just beginning in 1997 congress was split lcp was formed subsequently he went away from the congress he left the congress and he joined a break up a group called lok tantrik congress party which was set up by harishankar tiwari the brahmin gangster slash politician in this case congress party is brahmin gangster politician who set up his own party naresh agrawal who is now in the bjp and by the way this new party also included jagdambika pal who famously or infamously became the chief minister of uttar pradesh for less than a day the only one of his kind in the et- entire country now that lok tantrik party also in the course of time time split into three in 1996 7 one faction joined the bjp or bjp government and that's how Am- amar manitra party as its leading brahmin light served as a minister under kalyan singh under ram prakash gupta and under rajnath singh three bjp chief ministers until rajnath singh fired him once his involvement in that kidnapping came up 
in 2002 in by 2002 bsp came to power it was a short term B bsp government didn't last very long and that's when mayabati expelled him after this murder after his name came up in this murder and she failed to and she failed to bury that investigation 2007 he was in jail and from jail he contested the Lak the lakshmipur nathanba constituency his pocket borough and he won that election from jail now look at the man look at the man who's already been with cpi with the congress party a breakaway faction of congress party that is lcp loktantri congress party then been a partner been a minister in a bjp cabinet so part of the bjp also then a bsp minister five as i tell you his record as a politician by 2007 he's already been with six parties he's already served under four chief ministers in uttar pradesh and this time in 2007 he gets elected from his sixth party that is samajwadi party from jail from jail obviously he can't become a minister now because he is in jail as a murder accused and it is around this time that the supreme court moves the case to a cbi court in uttarakhand figuring out realizing that it's unlikely that the victim the victim's family will get justice in a up court at this point of time or at that point of time and if you think the story is over no it isn't because chief of the old block is also the tripathi son aman mani tripathi aman mani tripathi who you've seen giving interviews including to the print welcoming his parents release and saying this will be like for for nautonwa their constituency this will be like lord ram's return to ayodhya after banvas right he himself is under trial for allegedly now i have to say allegedly murdering his wife Sara Singh now the story was that Sara Singh on July 9 2015 she died and initially Amar Mani Tripathi said that she died in a road accident she died died in a road accident when she was he was swerving his vehicle or something to save a woman who was riding a bicycle again that story went through familiar territory local police investigations still state police investigation he was arrested and the CBI finally filed a charge sheet on February 18 2017 that charge sheet had a lot of charges the CBI charge sheet said that Aman Mani Tripathi that's the son now that Aman Mani Tripathi had killed his wife Sara Singh by strang strangulating her also that he had been subjecting her to physical torture cruelty and also finally that the murder was premeditated now this happened the charge sheet was filed in 2017 it is a cbi charge sheet since then the case has been revolving in orbit in fact sara singh's mother seema singh has been complaining that the case is not being taken seriously the family is not getting justice so that son that son meanwhile you would like to know what he's been doing so in 2012 well before he allegedly murdered his wife he had contested on an sp ticket you know in up politics hamam mein sabhi nange hain no party can say that i have not i have not patronized criminals because just the story of the tripathis tell you that they are all the same every party in up every party in up that exists today and some parties that don't exist including the holiest of them all the communist cpi all of them all of them have patronized the tripathi family so 2012 Aman Mani the son got Samajwadi Party's ticket from the family constituency and lost 2017 he contested from the same constituency this time as an independent and won remember 2017 was the election of the big bjp wave when yogi adityanath became chief minister in spite of the bjp wave he won so i don't know what arrangements might have taken place within in terms of vote transfers etc etc in 2022 bsp took him now right everybody wants everybody wants what might be called a winnable candidate it's the most convenient expression indian politics has invented winnable candidate 2022 bsp gave him a ticket and he lost from that constituency april of this year april of 2023 bsp expelled him for anti party activity obviously because by this time it's becoming evident that parents are going to be released 
by the yogi bjp government and already aman mani tripathi is getting attention from the from the government at one public event he see, seen touching yogi adityanath's feet and you can watch the interviews he's been giving to the media after his parents release was announced and he's been saying there that yogi adityanath is a guardian and a guide i regularly meet him to get his blessings etc etc the sum total of the story is that his parents who did kill a young poet a young woman who was 7 months pregnant she had a living being inside her that was proven there was enough evidence for them to be convicted for this sentence sentence to be upheld in higher courts they spent more than half their time comfortably in a hospital in their hometown and now they are out as free people that said let me get to the happy story that i had mentioned to you now we know that neeraj chopra has become india's first world champion he is also india's first gold medalist in a track and field event his javelin throw now he threw 88.17 meters not his career best but still good enough to get gold at the at, at, the, at the world championship important thing is that two other indians that is kishore jena finished fifth and dp manu finished sixth both throwing more than 84 meters kishore jena at 84.77 and dp manu at 84.14 that tells you that once excellence comes up in any area then around that excellence others grow so it's not as if in a country of 145 crore 142 whatever you want to say 140 crore people only one person can throw like this there must be many many more it's just that not enough people so far were thinking that it's, it's possible to earn glory by throwing the javelin because it's not a fashionable sport and maybe now more talent talented people are coming up and that's how this country is discovering more of these throwers in fact just the growth and the new depth that india has discovered in in a field where india was always very very weak it is not a field in which india has done well ever tell you the inspiration that a star can create so that's one the other thing that's even more important for me as an enthusiast for sport all sport not just cricket cricket yes but all sport particularly track and field is the success on, of the indian 4 by 400 meters men's relay team remember men's relay team indian women's relay team has done very well historically for a long time that is that is also the team that was once led by pt usha balsama shiny wilson and many others but indian 4 into 400 men's was never doing so well in fact indian 4 into 400 men if you want to see go back to history they won they won the gold medal in 1951 and then the gold medal in 1962 in asian games 51 asian games were in in in, in, De- in delhi 1962 asian games in jakarta just for nostalgic reasons let me also mention to you the runners in that race the four runners in that case were daljeet singh jagdish singh makhan singh and a man called milkha singh so 19, since 1962 india have not won the asia gold in 4 into 400 men's relay now this team has broken the asian record which is a wonderful thing a brilliant thing the existing asian record at this point was 2 minutes 59.51 seconds this team has done 2 minutes 59.05 seconds they did that timing in the semi final they were not able to repeat it in the final that's one of the reasons they finished at number 5 but this asian record now stands in their name now this team this indian men's team has been doing well at to- tokyo olympics also they had won a great race in that race in the heats they had broken then existing asian record that asian record they broke by running at 3 minutes 00.25 seconds these races are divided these races are divided based on microseconds subsequent to that record that this indian team or more or less this indian team two of the runners were the same they had set up in tokyo another asian team set up a new record which now this current team has broke so you will see on your screens four runners in the tokyo olympics team and the four runners now in the world championship team two runners are common to both of these that is mohammad anas and amoj jacob again the important thing to remember is that while this team set the asian record new asian record at tokyo olympics they did not qualify for the final they were not good enough still not good enough to qualify asia's best was still not good enough to qualify for the final now they qualified for the finals 
of the world championship that is what tells you about how creditable this achievement is and how important this is for indian track and field because you have four brilliant sprinters in your squad now each one of them is also a sprinter in his own right in terms of individual events now i told you about indian women's relay team indian women's relay team was formidable for a long time a very long time it would beat almost any competition at the asian level and and the last such team won the gold at 2010 commonwealth games in delhi and also the 2010 asian games at guangzhou and 2011 then something went wrong something went wrong as in all six members of our 4 by 400 fancy women's relay squad all six members tested positive for dope and were banned at which point i will also tell you a personal story in 2011 in bangalore I recorded a walk the talk episode with Ashwini Akunji who was like the star runner of this of this st very starry Indian 4x400 women's relay team and within a week of that recording before that episode could be telecast Ashwini Akunji was reported for doping and she and five others all five tested positive and India's women's relay squad was wiped out which has been a great tragedy for Indian track and field so all all six of them ashwini akunji mandeep kaur sini joseph joanna murmu priyanka pawar tiana mary thomas all of them were confirmed as having doped 